This is the final tutorial for linear regression. And in this one, I'm just going to go through the assumption checks. The data we're going to be looking at is just um, model M3 from the previous tutorials that we we're looking at. Um, so I'm not going to go into it in any detail at all because you've already gone through that. And this doesn't really matter for me just going through what the key assumption checks are. The script for this is going to be below as well. It's got all the same packages as before, but there's also these two additional ones that we're going to be looking at. And as I always say, if you've never used them before, you're going to have to install the two packages. So the OLSRR package, this will does a lot of the different assumption checks. And the car package is a nice simple way for looking up a um, multicollinearity. It produces various inflation factors very easily. There's also a package free way of doing it, which I'll show you first. So I've already got my data sets um, been read in and so on. If you want to get our assumption checks, the first thing we just need to do is run our regression model. This is exactly the same as what you've seen before. So I'm not going to go into this in any detail whatsoever. This is just our regression model. If you want to do an assumption checks, there's a few different things we need to look at. And I'll just go through these one at a time while we're doing it. Simply ask for our diagnostic plots. And what I was going to do is plot model three. Now we could run this, but you'd only like to show each graph one at a time. It's going to produce four graphs in total. But what I'm going to do instead is put in a little bit of code that allows you to show all four at once, which you'll probably find yourself using as well. It's a lot easier to do it this way. However, what I'm going to do is add this little bit of code here that allows us to put the four graphs in, into one single image and that's the bit of code there it just gives us a little two by two graph instead so I'm going to run that instead and now we'll be able to see them all at once and I'll go through each one individually so we run that and as you can see here this produces four different graphs I'm just going to zoom and we'll make that larger so I'm going to go through each of these graphs one at a time and how we can use these as our regression diagnostic graphs now this first plot is the regression residuals versus the fitted values. And this basically shows you if your residuals have nonlinear patterns, nonlinear relationships between the predictors and an outcome would be evidence from this red line, essentially. So this sort of red line here is not far off being a straight line. I know it's got a bit of a kink at the end, but it's not too bad. It's not a big curve like that or a line like that, a big curve like that or so on. It's not too bad. Basically, this plot where the residuals fit around this central line of zero here, and you want them obviously to be relatively evenly distributed on each side of the line. You're going to have a problem with this, as I say, when you see a big arch in the graph or something like that. If it's not relatively horizontal and relatively even, that would indicate that we have non-linear relationship. And of course, as a linear regression, you're expecting linear relationships between the two. The QQ plot here shows whether our residuals are normally distributed. The distribution of the dependent variable, or the distribution of the IVs, people check as well, doesn't really matter. What matters is the distribution of the residuals. Basically, do the residuals follow this straight line. Relatively speaking, they do. It's not great up at this end, there may be some problematic um, cases up here. However, it does re reasonably follow this line. It's when you get a line that sort of curves off, like that would indicate there's quite a severe deviation from a normal distribution in your residuals. This isn't bad, there may be some minor issues here. But generally speaking, you will always see the residuals will sort of tail away from the line at the bottom and the top as well. But relatively speaking, that follows the line. So our residuals have a near normal distribution. There's nothing too concerning with it. The next plot is the scale location plot. It's also it's called a spread location plot as well. And it just simply tells us um, if the residuals are equally spread across the predictors. This is the assessment of 
homo sedacity or equal variance. Again, you want to see a roughly horizontal line. This isn't bad at all. If you see a line that's sort of going that way like that, that would be an indication of a problem. You can see the residuals, the standardized residuals appear pretty evenly spread across this graph as well. So if they're all sort of clustered around here and a line would appear sort of like that, then that would be an indication of a problem. But again, you want to see a horizontal line here. Now the final graph is residuals versus leverage. And you can see it mentions Cook's distance here. And basically what this graph um, allows us to identify any influential cases. So there's a difference between the concept of just like an outlier, someone with a high score and something, and a influential case. An influential case is something that has a particular in influence on the regression line. What we're interested in here is problems in this corner or in this corner here. And in fact, if you do have problems, what you'll see is a little dotted line, two sets of dotted lines will appear there and there, and another one here and here. And within these would fall the problematic cases. So it's really easy to spot the problematic cases. They'll fall within those lines and they'll be numbered because these would be the cases that are falling outside of Cook's distance. You can't even see the Cook's distance lines in this one, uh, which influences there's going to be no particularly influential cases. So if we had a dotted line here and then we saw a case in there, that would indicate that's going to have a significant influence on the regression line. So if you get a graph and it does have these lines, pairs of lines that appear in the corner here and here, if you see any of the cases that fall within them, so which is outside of Cook's distance, then you've got a problem with those individual cases. They are having an undue influence on your data. So it's a nice easy way of identifying them rather than doing any sort of calculations by hand with formulas and so on. You'll be able to pick up those cases from this graph very easily. So there's four different plots that you can produce. You know, you can produce them in other, other ways using the OLSRR command. So for example, you if you want the residual plot for model three, so you could use this command as well. So that's just gonna do your residual QQ plot. So you can run that and there you go. It's gonna produce our QQ plot. So it looks a little bit different. Well just different colors exactly the same graph likewise we could ask for the residual fit plot and this is again some of the things we saw before but it doesn't actually put the fit line directly on this unless you ask for it and there is another plot that we could ask for that's not produced by this simple plot command we could actually ask for a residual histogram so this is a histogram obviously and that's the, the distribution of your residuals here. So you can see it's a pretty normal distribution. There's a few high residuals up this end. And you can tell that that's an issue as well by when we look at the QQ plot, for example, that they're, they deviate from the line more at the top end of the line. So but you can see the residual histogram is pretty normal there as well. Now, we could ask for a form of statistical test of this which is to test normality. So there's a plot, this is a test of normality. So we can run that and we can look at the, we've got, I'm sure you're familiar with the shapiro wilk test. So do we have a normal distribution of our residuals? Yes, we do. P-value 0.1105. So that's probably the measure that you would use rather than a kolmogorov garov smirov test. So as you can see, we do need that assumption as well. You're better off really looking at the plots though in my opinion so we can look at all these assumptions but we have missed out one of our assumptions and that is collinearity is there any collinearity between our predictors a few different ways you can produce, produce this i'm using the method that's in the car package and this is why i use it we just type vif model 3 variance inflation factor for model 3 run that and there we go here's the variance inflation factor suggesting whether there's multicollinearity for stress, prior ability, sex, and age using indications of uh, multicollinearity if these are above three, certainly above five, and if it's above 10, you're screwed. 
or you're not screwed but you've got problems with your data and as you can see in all these cases there's no indication of multicollinearity whatsoever so that's how you can produce your assumption check it's really straightforward and as i always say once you've done this once you can use the this set of commands again and again and again so you can always check your models really quickly and efficiently all you need to do is make sure that you are testing the model that you're currently running